Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. And we've got some trade drama here that I'm actually going to stir up myself. Usually I don't try and generate too much drama around the NBA, but I do think there is going to be a very high likelihood that we see a big time player on a big time contract get traded this offseason. Of course, we are past the NBA trade deadline, so he cannot be traded the rest of the season. But I do think going into next season, unless this team wins an NBA championship, he will probably be wearing a different jersey. And the, that, of course, that player I'm talking about is Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers. I think he's going to get moved this offseason. We'll talk about why as we get into this video. If you guys are new to Utility Sports and the channel, make sure to leave a like on today's video. Also, subscribe. It would really help us out here at Utility Sports. And let's go ahead and move forward into the video here, talking about Tobias Harris. He's got two years left on his contract after this season. Both of them have very high, fully guaranteed cap hit numbers of 37 and a half million, and then also 38 plus million dollars the following season. So Tobias Harris is currently tied with the Philadelphia 76ers for two more seasons. We'll see if he actually plays those seasons in a Philadelphia 76ers uniform. Like I said earlier, if I had to guess, my thoughts probably is that he isn't going to finish this contract out with the 76ers, but will instead be on a different team going into next season. And part of the reason for that is how he's performed since the James Harden trade. Uh, he's been very open about his role change. You know, he said that he's going to have to take a different role with this team now that James Harden's in town. And that's true. The only issue here is it's not even that he's the third fiddle. He's the fourth. He's the fourth best player on this team offensively. Tyrese Maxey's taken a huge step forward in year two of his NBA career. And he, Maxey's the perfect fit next to Embiid and Harden because of his ability to knife defenses, play without the basketball. He makes quick decisions when he has it. He puts a lot of pressure on the rim. And he's a tough cover when you have so many people looking and staring at James Harden when he has the ball. And when Joel Embiid has post-ups, Maxey cuts without it can catch it and make something happen quick, can also operate a pick and roll. Tyrese Maxey is the perfect third player for Philadelphia. Now the issue for them is, do they try and turn Tobias Harris into some ancillary pieces, or do they try and make another big time move? We'll talk about both possibilities in this video, uh, but you see his numbers here, six points against Minnesota. I was at that game in person. Uh, he went two of nine from the field and he was brutal to watch in that one. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, then his next game against the Knicks, 12 points, 3-9 from the field again. And then a better performance against the Knicks on Wednesday. He went 5 of 10. They do play the Cavaliers tonight, the day this video comes out. So knowing my luck, he'll probably have like 25 points tonight on like, I don't know, something crazy shooting like 7 of 10 or something. Uh, and this video will look a little silly. But uh, my guess is, you know, here with Tobias Harris, is he's just not the right guy next to James Harden, Joel Embiid, and Tyrese Maxey. I think they could really use some really solid role players uh, or other ways to really open up their books, which we'll talk about. There's a bunch of different possibilities here for Philadelphia. And I've pretty much got all three of those ideas cooked up. So let's look at my trade ideas here. I've got three of them in this video and there's three different routes they can go with this. The first route is you try and use his max salary to get another player with a max salary, AKA Bradley Beal. He's going to be the player that I think Joel Embiid and James Harden would love to play with. Uh, the issue is it's going to be tough to get him. And then you also look moving forward. You could try and turn him into a trade exception where you trade him out to a team that has cap space this summer. There's going to be three or four of those. And then what you try and bring back is very limited salary. Uh, you probably don't have to give up a ton of assets in this move because the team's taking him with cap space, not really bringing a ton back. And then what you do have is you still have your remaining assets left over after the Brooklyn Nets trade. And you try and go back out into the marketplace and use a massive trade exception of nearly 35 to $38 million. And in there, you try and go and get some good players with that, whether that's a few role players or a star in its own right. It gives you flexibility, which is something Daryl Morey would love to have. And especially looking at this roster, there's a lot of stuff already cooked into the future. These guys are you know, very well established together. James Harden's going to be there. Joel Embiid's going to be there. Tyrese Maxey's going to be there. Matisse Thibel probably going to be there. Birkin Korkmaz, George Niang probably going to be there. You know, they have guys that they want to keep on that roster. So about trying to find ways to improve, you have to look at other options here. So let's start off with the one that makes sense for a trade exception purpose. From that standpoint, you trade Tobias Harris 
with a first round pick in 2023. Quick note, this trade would have to go down after the Philadelphia 76ers first round pick this year, which is being selected by the Brooklyn Nets. This, they can't trade 2023 until after the selection is made on draft night. But I do think this is a pretty good outcome here for both sides. Because you look at Kenrich Williams, he's not only a good player, but he's a good player on a cheap contract. So you're able to bring him in at only $2 million next season. He's going to be a nice piece for you if you're Philadelphia, specifically considering the fact that with Kenrich Williams on your roster, you get a lot of the same output you're getting from Tobias Harris, but at $34, $35 million less. And for Sam Presti here in Oklahoma City, you're selling yourself on not only bringing in another asset, gives you more draft flexibility, but also on the uh, school of thought that Sam Presti has shown in the past with Chris Paul, with a few other good players as well, that he's willing to take in veterans and older players who Tobias Harris is about to turn 30 this summer. And you try and you know make him have a really good season for you. You fo focal point him on offense. He can help the Thunder win. The Thunder are competitive right now. They're not winning a ton of games because I don't. I think they're a piece or two away from really becoming more competitive. And Tobias Harris could be that. They're in Oklahoma City. I actually think he'd be a pretty good fit with their roster. And you get to get him solely using cap space. You're not going to be able to sign a really good free agent this offseason if you're Sam Presti. There's not really a long-term approach here locked in with Tobias Harris either. You let him ride with you for a year, then he goes into the final year of his contract, and that contract becomes extremely movable, especially if he has a good season for you. So I think this makes a ton of sense for both sides here because the 76ers get a good player in Kenrich Williams. You also open up a $35.5 million trade exception. Of course, you do have to give up a first-round pick in this deal, which hurts your flexibility, but that $35.5 million could be huge in bringing in a few role players and guys who could really fit your roster while keeping Kenrich Williams as well. Moving on to the other trade idea here that I have, and this one's about getting some role players and guys who can help you now. So for me here, this is a three-team deal, and it requires a little bit of thinking here with this. So people are going to say that, see that I have Tobias Harris going to the Portland Trailblazers, and they're not going to be happy about that probably. Right now, I think Portland's eyeing Jeremy Grant. They're going to have a little bit of cap space this offseason. They're going to want to make a move. They do have two first-round picks as well. For me, Portland needs more size and length. Tobias Harris, a quality half-court score, is bigger, can defend fours. I think there is some value here bringing in Tobias Harris if you're Portland, especially if you get a second-round pick in it. I know they do trade two second-rounders in this deal as well. But the issue here is, again, if you're Portland, who are you attracting in free agency and how much better do they make you? If the Pistons play hard to get on Jeremy Grant again, Tobias Harris might be their best option. They can get him pretty easily. The only player they give up is Greg Brown in this deal. They're able to keep their two first-round picks. Very possible they come back next season with Damian Lillard, Tobias Harris, Yusuf Nurkic, and two top 10 picks added to their roster, along with still um, everything else that they have in Anthony Simons, Nasir Little. It's a pretty easy way for the Blazers to just simply get better for not having to give up too much using some cap space to bring him in. And then you look at the 76ers here, what you get in return for sending out uh, two second round picks and Tobias Harris, you get Buddy Heald and Goga Batadze. And you also get an $11 million trade exception. So this is a really beneficial deal here if you're Philadelphia. You get a shooter that you probably do really want and need next to James Harden and Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid and Buddy Heald, who loves to shoot the three ball. You also get a backup big in Goga Batadze, who isn't a great backup center, but I think is serviceable enough where he's definitely an improvement over, you know, the likes of DeAndre Jordan, Willie Colley Stein, who they had on a 10 day deal that they didn't bring back. You also have, you know, Paul Reed, Paul Millsap. I mean, Goga Batadze is just better than all those guys. So for me, uh, it is a definite improvement for them still. And I don't think the Pacers really have a ton of interest in holding on to him. He's been a little shaky in Rick Carlisle's system. And then for the Pacers here, the reason they're interested in doing this is you get three second round picks. Buddy Heald, probably a guy you don't plan on having there long term. They're probably going to look to turn the backcourt over to uh, the combination of Tyrese Halliburton and Chris Duarte. So Buddy Heald's probably expendable if you're Indiana. And Batadze, like I said, it hasn't really fit super well. So you get some second round picks here. It gives you more draft equity, draft flexibility, and assets that you can use to either move up in the draft if you want to do that. Uh, or other players you can maybe take stabs on because I think the Pacers still could use a little bit more wing depth. And also Greg Brown here does help with that. He's not the most attractive wing, uh, but he is extremely athletic and has pretty good size and length. So I think 
Uh, with Rick Carlisle, that would fit. Carlisle has a history of developing 3D wings, so maybe Greg Brown could be the latest acquisition of that. Uh, but here, I think this really makes a lot of sense for the Blazers and 76ers, with the Pacers getting some more draft assets as well. And then moving into my final trade here, and this is, of course, the big one. This is the one that I think everyone's going to be talking about. All the big media platforms are going to look at this one. Bradley Beal is going to opt into his player option, I think. Very possible that he could opt out, though, and then sign the extension flat out with uh, with the Washington Wizards, which does complicate this a little bit. If he takes his player option, he could immediately request a trade, get traded to Philadelphia, and then sign the five-year max contract with Philly. So this is a real possibility here that you could look at the 76ers putting Bradley Beal alongside James Harden and Joel Embiid here. So what I have going out from Washington or from Philadelphia, excuse me, is Tobias Harris for money purposes, Matisse Thibel, Jaden Springer, two pick swaps in 2026 and 2028, 2023 first round pick. Again, this would have to be executed after the Brooklyn Nets make the selection on draft night. And then also a 2023 second round pick. The Sixers, of course, get Bradley Beal and Anthony Gill. Anthony Gill's in there for money purposes. Probably wouldn't have to actually be attached uh, when it actually comes to the real trade, but he's in here now for uh, the trade to actually go through. And the interesting thing here with this is Philadelphia would, of course, have a big three. Right now, I have them holding on to Tyrese Maxey in this. I don't know if they're going to actually be capable of doing that. Washington's probably not going to want to give up Bradley Beal for anything less than Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris and Matisse Thibel. But at the end of the day, if Bradley Beal does take that player option, he has all the leverage. And if he says, I want to go to Philadelphia, Daryl Morey could play really, really hard to get with Tyrese Maxey. And I think that's really realistically what would probably go down is Bradley Beal gives him a list and says, I want to go here or here or here. And if Philadelphia is on that list, they have a lot of leverage in these trade discussions. And they're going to try and hold on to Tyrese Maxey as best they can. I know it might be a little clunky having Maxey, Beal, and Harden. But I think, you know, with Daryl Morey, we know he loves talent and he would keep his most talented players. Um, giving up Bible's tough. And giving up uh, on Jaden Springer early too, I don't love that. I like Jaden Springer as a young prospect. But to get Bradley Beal, you do this. Uh, so if I'm Philadelphia, this is the home run. Washington, this is probably one of the worst case scenarios. Realistically, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think this is a great trade for Washington. Uh, but if, you know, if Bradley Beal takes his player option, and there's a lot hinging on this. I'm not, you know, this is very iffy that this could happen. I, I'm not saying this is a lock to happen. I'm saying this is a possible outcome. If Bradley Beal says, I'm going to take my player option. You have me for one season. Trade me now. Trade me to the Philadelphia 76ers, and we'll be done with this. Then the Wizards have to look at themselves and say, okay, we either don't do that. He enters unrestricted free agency, and he just goes and signs with Philadelphia, assuming they could get off Tobias Harris in a sign-and-trade type deal. And then we're left with nothing, or we can at least get Matisse Thibel some first and Jaden Springer at least in this deal. Uh, because I do not think Tyrese Maxey would be available. So that's my thoughts on the 76ers and Wizards swap. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Thank you again so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section. I know some of these trades might not be the most realistic. It's also tough getting some trade ideas out before the end of the season. It's a little bit of a different time to talk about them. Uh, but I think they are some actual possible outcomes. So hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. And we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.